Srimad Bhagavatam is also a history of the great rulers of different parts of the universe. In this verse, the names of Priyavrata and Uttanapada, sons of Swayambhuva, are mentioned. They rule this earth, which is divided into seven islands. The seven islands are still current as Asia, Europe, Africa, America, Australia, the North and the South Poles. There is no chronological history of all the Indian kings in Srimad Bhagavatam. But the deeds of the most important kings such as Priyavrata and Uttanapada and many others like Lord Ramachandra and Maharaj Yudhishthira are recorded because the activities of such pious kings are worth hearing. People may benefit by studying their histories. So as Prabhupada begins the purport by saying that the Srimad Bhagavatam is a history of great rulers. It is also a history of great rulers of different parts of the universe. Even though all the kings that ruled the universe or the earth planet are not elaborated, The Leelas of exemplary kings like Priyavrata, Uttanapada and many others like Lord Ramachandra, Yudhishthira are recorded in the Vedic literature, are recorded in the Puranas and summary of them, of those are also described in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and why it is recorded? Because these activities of the pious kings are worth hearing. And by hearing the history of these kings, people will benefit a lot with regard to how to conduct their journey as a person, as a member of the human race or the member of the Sanatana Dharma, as a member of the Varnashrama Dharma. So this hearing of uh, glories of the devotees, hearing of the glories of the Supreme Lord is very much part and parcel of Varnashrama Dharma straight from all brahmacharis to grahastha to vanaprastha to sannyas everybody the hearing is a very fundamental <coughs> aspect of uh, the varnashrama why is it so because the entire varnashrama institution itself is meant to promote the human beings the souls in the human beings to promote them to back to Godhead if they want to. Promote them to eternal life. So therefore, one thing is to live the life of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Grahastha, Brahmachari, any of those things, combination, Varna and Ashrama. To live that life according to the principles of Dharma, of each Dharma. And that alone is not enough. Continuous hearing is required to elevate oneself to higher statuses of life, towards higher life, higher status of sattvic life. And eventually hear about the glories of the Lord and His devotees and get purified at heart and realize one's situation as a servant of the Lord, as a part and parcel of the Lord and attain eternal life. That is the purpose of this entire system as designed by the Lord. Nothing is accidental. The Lord has designed this creation. The Lord has designed the human beings. The Lord has designed the trees, the animals, the reptiles, the oceans, the earth, the sun, the moon. Everything is created to sustain life in a particular form in which 
it exists now today it has not come by accident human being why nobody can answer why human being is in this particular form why human being is different from animal why everybody is not just animal what is the difference between this animal body and the human body what is the difference in consciousness in the animal body and human body why the difference who made this difference such a big questions are never answered by the scientist such big questions are never answered by the evolutionist why this exist this singularities exist there is a species of animals and suddenly there is a human species and the human species if you see they have got so many characteristics which is not there in the animal distinct categories for instance intelligence to understand inquire into life is there only in the human form of life so the very existence of these qualities in the human being itself corroborates the fact that human being are meant to utilize this intelligence which the animals do not have in order to follow the principles given in the scriptures so that by following they get purified and they transcend themselves as a dharma artha kama moksha liberation from this material world is actually the goal of life goal of human life if you take today's world who knows this goal of human life is moksha or liberation from material world and attaining the lotus feet of krishna attaining the service of the lord in vaikuntha in goloka vrindavana that is the goal nobody knows we are very fortunate to come to know of it because of shila prabhupad he is a real preacher who has spread this knowledge which was common knowledge in our vedic society in our vedic civilization here is talking about king uttanapada and priyavrata ruling the entire earth so many all the continents they were ruling today it is easy to visualize somebody ruling all over the all the continents because of the communication and connection and all those things those days there is no communication one village to another village is so far no transportation no communication imagine in those days one person has to be the ruler of the entire earth it simply means that there was communication there was transportation highly advanced means of uh, communication existed the single ruler ruled this earth as far as we are concerned we are taught only the history by the britishers even history of science is what what the westerners wrote one fine day they discovered the earth is round one fine day and that is what we learn in our school but this is already there in all our scripture 5000 years back these things they were talk of blue gold gold means what round blue gold it's already there all the nakshatras all the stars they have all been plotted and they have been talked about in all the scriptures sometimes to such fine degree of details the stars are described so we should never get carried away by this western historians account of what actually happened on earth they know very little things as if human race did not know the earth was round before you know columbus uh, you know discovered but the whole world including indians think yeah yeah yes till then we did not know 
they are having all these texts all these shastras everything is here and completely you know oblivious of the existence of the science of this earth science of this universe science of communication everything existed everything was systematically destroyed by foreign invasion so what would be the quality of these kings who ruled we'll see their leelas their activities how principled personalities they were according to westerners no man slowly evolved from monkeys became more and more civilized and now they become human beings there yeah, 5000 years back this bhagavatam is talking about this is not about return 5000 years back Uthanapada, Priyavarta were all talking about so many kalpas back. Such high quality human beings. If you read about these qualities of human beings, you can't find a modern human being of any anywhere near that quality. You can't find a prime minister, you can't find a president, you can't find a king, you can't find a person who is a quality of being described in Shrimad Bhagavatam. If they are of that quality, what does it mean? the citizens were also of that quality but of the quality of life so according to the modern civilization they are thinking man is getting civilized and human race is advancing from ape to civilized it is advancing and then now technology everything human race is advancing progressive civilization according to them but progress towards what they do not know progress towards what yes more comforts more technology more sense gratification they say okay now we have got we have our technology has progressed so much that now we have got cure for every disease so so many diseases we have got cure isn't it progress cancer was there now we have found you know solution for tb cancer so many things we have got we are we are really progressing but if you look at the you know you create new diseases and you find new cures is that progress these new diseases that we talk about now which they research and they think it's progress they have made progress and found cures for it never even existed on human in the human population all these diseases so because of avaidik vaishnava avaidik uh, human life human lifestyle without guidance of the shastras it has resulted in creating so many new new diseases it is very sad that except by the mercy of prabhupad we are saved we understand the the spiritual value of all these things the spiritual value of cow the spiritual value of goraksha the value of agriculture agro based life whereas the outside world they are completely oblivious of this great treasure that india has had not only spiritual even material meaningless debate they have about cow why cow it should not be consumed we should allow everybody to eat cow a freedom in that case one should also consider as yes, you should have freedom to not to 
burn or bury the human bodies they should be able to eat but if someone is found today even though there is no law if someone is found today to be murdering a human being and eating will you say it is his freedom you will not say it's freedom you will arrest him put him behind the bars or even the so called people who who say who promote okay those who want to eat cow they should eat cow cow meat they should eat beef they should be allowed to eat the very same people if you tell them there was somebody neighbor you know his his uh, mother died and uh, he thought why waste this flesh i'll cut and cook and and he is eating that every day <laughs> how is are why what is your reason what is your reasoning there you are sensitive yes you are sensitive to culture hey, how can he eat his own mother you are sensitive there why you are not sensitive here there are some people who are sensitive in the same manner just because you don't treat as cow as mother but a vedic culture cow is treated as mother because cow is the mother you may not see where you are in your in your cities and towns you may not see where your milk is coming from you all consume milk it is coming from mothers why you are not sensitive so they talk as if they are highly rational but actually where is the rationality when it comes to this kind of things empty debates if somebody wants to debate they should really study what is the role of cow in life on earth what is the way of sustenance of life on earth today every scientist knows the way of living today that we have adopted human beings it cannot sustain the earth for more than 100 years it cannot sustain earth cannot be sustained but they close their eyes to that why not solve that problem even materially why you are closing your eyes to that come on why don't you research a vedic system of sustained sustained life why not research into that how for millions of years life can be sustained on earth simply by cow bull earth agriculture this modern life of increased sense gratification creating so many consumer goods unnecessary for the human life turn them into create a desires and turn them into needs and today without those needs you cannot live and it has become a need for everyone what was something not a need for anyone for instance take wrist watch 100 years back it was not a need for anybody now how much resource is being spent to create a wrist watch practically everybody has to have a wrist watch can life go on without wrist watch it could have it was going on so lifestyle has created a need for a wrist watch that means there is need for so many factories like that then so much engagement for them this is a very simple example if you compare today's life modern the last 15 20 years the needs have increased rapidly so much that today's children the needs are so much they become they cannot live without that so does it come easily no the earth's resources are used and it cannot sustain so solution is not simply in a different mechanism of living the solution is completely different values of living which is uh, preached by the brahmanas in the society 
Therefore, Brahmana is required, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shuddha, that kind of a Varnashrama system. And all these, this social institution was protected by a king. You will see that these kings, how they were protecting the institution, they are protecting each member of the institution, it's all. So because today there are no proper Kshatriya king, the institution has fallen apart also. Institution does not exist. If some Kshatriya has to create an empowered in incarnation of the Lord has to come and he has to create an institution, re-establish the institution of Varnashma Dharma. If, if, the, if everybody has to benefit from this, from a benefit from the human form, taking, having taken birth as a human being. It is very, very deplorable situation where parents, the children are, children, high school children are taking to drinking, smoking. Where parents, maybe shocking, the other day I was hearing, you know, the parents, some children, parents, they involve children also, high school students, once they are in high school, if they are drinking, they give drink to children also. This has become a st status, a lifestyle. If my child does not know how to drink, the child does not know how to, dr how to be in a drinking party, she will be misfit, so they should also learn. High school kids have parties in five-star hotels. In five-star hotels they have parties. I was shocked. No, no, we have not heard about this. I think even your generation, our generation also, we are not, your generation also you not heard. But this is a fact, it's going on. And naturally parents are encouraging. Because parents also, they already it's become a communication gap. Parents themselves are product of this kind of uh, ignorance. They are product of this kind of ignorance. I'm talking about India. In this country we are talking. This is happening. Any questions? Jaya Grandarat Shimad Bhagavatam ki jaya. Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada ki jaya.